Recently, I released a video on sonic booms and why they happen when you go faster than the speed of sound. So if you haven't seen that video, I recommend you go check it out so you can understand more about sonic booms and the speed of sound. Welcome to On the Shoulders of Science, I'm Ben. And if this is your first time here and you want to learn about cool and interesting scientific facts and concepts in a fun and easy to understand way, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so now I want to talk about why going faster than the speed of sound, or breaking the sound barrier, is so difficult. The first man-made object to break the speed of sound actually happened thousands of years ago with the invention of the bullwhip. When you crack a whip, the end of the whip whips around so fast that it actually breaks the speed of sound, causing a mini sonic boom. That's the crack when you crack a whip. But flying a jet faster than the speed of sound was far more difficult, and it wasn't until 1947 that Chuck Yeager became the first human to break the sound barrier in an X-1 experimental jet. But why was this so difficult? Can't you just put more and more energy in and go faster and faster? Well, yes and no. You see, when you're traveling close to the speed of sound but just a little bit slower, the sound waves coming out in front of the plane get bunched up, creating an area of much higher pressure right in front of the plane, right in the direction you are headed. So this immensely increases drag, so you have to put even more energy to overcome this effect. And because the propellers are moving in relation to the plane, the tips of the propellers would typically reach the speed of sound before the plane reached the speed of sound. And that shockwave produced when the propellers broke the sound barrier would decrease the amount of energy going in to thrust the plane. Early test pilots trying to break the speed of sound would often try to dive to gain more speed, but this led to many crashes and deaths as planes were not well built to pull out of dives at that speed. So breaking the sound barrier required a huge amount of energy to be output in a robust and lightweight model, which was finally achieved by Chuck Yeager flying a Bell X-1 rocket engine powered jet over the Mojave Desert on October 14, 1947. The rocket engine propellant is made up of liquid oxygen and water alcohol. Since the fuel system in the X-1 has an explosive potential equal to that of its own weight in TNT, a special pit has been constructed into which the X-1 is lowered for loading into the B-29 mothership. The B-29 has now reached drop altitude. Three, two, one, drop. And he does it, the first human to crack the sound barrier. Nowadays, the fastest planes can fly about two and a half or even three times the speed of sound, but commercial airliners only fly about 0.7 times the speed of sound, because any faster, then they have to deal with that increased drag as you approach the sound barrier, or they actually have to break the speed of sound, which would send out a sonic boom in every direction, which would be very unpleasant for everyone on the ground every time a plane flew over them, which is why supersonic flight is banned over land. However, if you're lucky enough to have been around to fly on a Concorde plane, you will have broken the speed of sound. These planes flew supersonic over ocean routes, reaching speeds of up to 1.75 times the speed of sound. You could get from New York to London in about three hours, whereas today it takes around seven hours. However, these planes were discontinued in 2003 because of their expense to fly and the cramped nature of such an aerodynamic model. Oh, and last video I promised I would explain what's going on here when a jet breaks the speed of sound. Well, this is called a vapor cone, or a sonic boom cone, and it happens when the air is very humid. As you approach the speed of sound, the air right in front of the plane is under a lot of pressure. But right when you start going faster than the speed of sound, that is, when you break the sound barrier, the air moves behind the plane to a zone of much lower pressure. And this sudden and drastic change from high pressure to low pressure causes the air to rapidly cool. And because the air is humid, all the water in the air suddenly condenses and forms a cloud in the plane's wake. Thank you for watching this video of On the Shoulders of Science. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you liked this video, you might also like my video on the Doppler effect and why cars do this. Link in the description. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you learned something and I'll see you next time.